Daniel chapter 9. So this is the prayer of Daniel. And one thing I like about, you know, in the Bible when you read prayers, especially like Psalms, you think of prayer, when people pray, it's stuff that's coming from the heart. So I like reading prayers in the Bible because you can see the heart of people. You can see the heart of man when they're praying to God. So we're going to start there in verse 1. It says, In the first year of Darius, the son of Azarias, of the seed of the Medes, which was main king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years where of the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So we can see right here that the first thing I want to pull out of this uh, chapter is that Daniel understood by books. So that's, that's referring to the word of God. So in this time that Daniel is praying to God, he's in the Babylonian captivity. The king Nebuchadnezzar came and took over the nation of Israel and brought God's people into bondage. So he's in, a, he's in a time of trouble, a time of tribulation, and he's seeking God. He's seeking understanding from God. Go to Proverbs chapter 2. So those of us that haven't read our Proverbs today, I'm going to read some of it for us. In Proverbs chapter 2. You know, so when we're, when we're going through hard times, you know, we're faced with questions. We're faced with decisions. We're, and, and, you know, and man's instinct, is to seek understanding or, or to seek other man's opinions, right? We're, we're trying to seek understanding and wisdom from other places. But God wants you to seek Him for understanding. God wants you to seek His Word. And we see Daniel, he's seeking God's Word. He's seeking understanding from the book of the Bible. I'll get there for myself. So Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 1. So where do we get our understanding from? It's from, it's from the Word of God. It says, My son, now just put yourself here that God is speaking to you. Yeah. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Verse 3, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. So he's wanting you to seek. He's wanting you to try to gain knowledge. It takes effort. It takes applying it to your heart. Verse 4. If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasure. So you think of like pirates. They're always searching for treasure. They will go through storms and a boat to find hidden treasure. Well, you should have that same mindset when you want knowledge from God's Word. It takes, it takes effort. You know, you can go through a lot of struggle, a lot of time, a lot of prayer, a lot of fight, fasting. To get that knowledge from God. Verse 5. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. So after you seek. After you search. Then God will give it to you. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. And find the knowledge of God. Verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He's a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment. And preserveth the way of the saints. Go back to chapter to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. So here in the book of Daniel, the first thing we see is he's seeking understanding from God's word in his time of trouble. Look at verse 3. And he says, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God. And made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So not only was Daniel seeking God through his word, he was seeking God through prayer. And we know Daniel was serious about his prayer because it says he did it with fasting. You know, think of a time where you fast. You know, and fasting, uh, you know, fasting in the Bible, a lot of times it's at least one day without eating. For me, that's hard to do. <laughs> All right, that's, that's a hard thing to do. But that shows you the seriousness of where Daniel was at. That he was willing to neglect his flesh from something that he needs to survive to seek God in prayer. Look at verse 5. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly. 
and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. So when Daniel's coming to God in prayer, we see him admitting his sinful... He's admitting that his nation's been in sin. Right? He's admitting that they have rejected God's word and went down the wrong path. He's admitting, it says, Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets. He's admitting that they've rejected even God's people, God's preachers that were bringing the word. Look at verse 7. O Lord, righteousness belong, belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off. Through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their transgression, they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. So we see God, because they have not seeked understanding, because they have not seeked them in prayer, because they have rejected the prophets, God brings confusion to their nation. God brings bondage to their nation. Now they're in a situation where even if they want to get out, they can't get out. God brings you to a point Sometimes in our life, when you're going down the wrong path, He's going to bring you to a point where the only way out is to seek Him. The only way out is to seek God's Word and understanding. Seek God in prayer and admit you're wrong. Look at verse 9. To the Lord our God belongeth mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against Him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. So again, Daniel is just admitting the wrong in his, in his life and in his nation's life. Neither have we obeyed, verse 10, the voice of the Lord our God to walk in His way, in His laws, which He set before us by His servants the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed Thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey Thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us in the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against Him. And He hath confirmed His words which He spake against us and against our judges, that judge us by bringing upon us the, a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. Now you think about Daniel. I believe Daniel was a good Christian. I believe Daniel was a good guy. Yeah. But he's looking at the bigger picture that his nation is in sin. That his nation is being destroyed because as a majority they have left God. Or as a majority they have left God. So he's applying it to himself also though. Because you think of a nation that leaves God, the problem is not with the world. The problem is not with the unsaved. The problem is for the Christians not seeking God. The problem is for the Christians not seeking understanding from God's Word. Look at verse 13. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Verse 14, Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all His works, which He doeth, for we obeyed not His voice. And jump down to verse, verse 16. <clears throat> it says, O Lord, according to all Thy righteousness I beseech Thee, let Thine anger and Thy fury be turned away from Thy city Jerusalem, Thy holy mountain, because for our sins... And for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. So a, a nation of God has become a reproach. How, how did that happen? It's when you leave God. When you stop seeking understanding from God's word. When you stop seeking prayer in God. This makes me think of Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? You know, it wasn't the Sodomites that got Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed. It wasn't the murderers. It wasn't the unsaved crowd. It was the Christians. Because the Bible says that God would have spared that city if there was ten righteous people. So that tells me that Lot was not doing his job. Right? So all this, you think of what we're going through now in the United States of America. Pestilence. Being in bondage. Having to cover our mouths. is because God's people 
is not proclaiming the Word of God. True. It's our fault right. why judgment of God is coming upon us. Go to Ma uh, Luke chapter 15. <coughs> Luke chapter 15. <clears throat> I'm going to keep reading here from Daniel 9 while you're in Luke 15. It says in verse 17, Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication. Thank you. <clears throat> and cause thy face to shine about thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. So now we see Daniel trying to come to God and to turn from his sin, to repent from their sins so they can start getting the blessings from God. And it says in verse 18, you're still in Luke 15. It says, "Oh my God, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine eyes and behold our desolations and the city which was called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies." So he's saying, "I know we're doing bad, God. I know we're making a bad name for our God, but he's saying, if we turn from our ways, hear us." And bring us back to you for your mercies, for your righteousness. He says, verse 19, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O my God. For thy city and thy people are called by thy name. So we can apply this by, you know, when we start. Because, you know, when you're a Christian, you know when you're starting to backslide. Yep. You know, you know you're doing wrong. You know there's things you got to change in your life. And... Oh, you know, the advice we need to take is we need to do it immediately. We need to do it when we notice it. Let me get there in Luke chapter 15. Because that's what God wants. God wants you to seek Him. And, you know, He knows we're going to mess up. <clears throat> you know, I, I tell people when I'm giving the gospel, it's like, you know, God had to give us the gift of eternal life for free. Because He knew we couldn't earn it. And he knew once he gave it to us, we we're going to still mess up. Yeah. <laughs> right? So he had to give it to us yeah. for free. So in Luke chapter 15, read here. It says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. So notice those that are drawn near to God. It's those that know they're in sin. Right? Look at verse 3. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he loose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? So, you know, we're talking about repentance. We're talking about turning back to God. I believe in this passage, it's a parable, but I believe there's a hundred sheep here, and they're all saved. Right? But I believe one has went down the wrong path. Yeah. Right, and in verse five it says, "And when he and then when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing." So when God's people, obviously He don't want you to go down the wrong path, but when you come back to Him, He's rejoicing. He wants that. He wants that to happen. Verse six, and when He cometh home, He calleth together His friends and neighbors, saying unto them, "Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost." Verse seven, I say unto you that likewise. Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. So we see the importance of people getting back right with God. And we see how the people in heaven, God's, God's people, God's angels in heaven, how their heart is glad when that happens. Now jump down to verse... Um, all right, verse 11. Verse 11. So, you know, think this in mind, th keep this in mind when, you know, us as Christians, when we have brothers and sisters that go down a wrong path, or even things that we disagree with, right? And we know they're in sin, but we they want to come back. You know, we shouldn't have the attitude where it makes us mad when they get back right. You know, we should be rejoicing when that happens. Because look at verse 11. He said... And he said, a certain man had two sons. So we're going to read this parable about two sons, right? And we know the prodigal son, we read about the, black, the backslider that receives all the inheritance from his father and go lives an unrighteous life. But I'm going to show you in this passage, both of these sons are backslidden. I'm going to show you how. Verse 12, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, 
Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. So we see the first son, he gets his inheritance and he goes and lives an unrighteous life. Verse 14, And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he begun to be one. Now notice where he went, a famine became in that land. Maybe it's because he was a Christian and he wasn't doing his job. Maybe because he was like Lot yeah. and he wasn't proclaiming God's word. He was living unrighteous. Look at verse 15. So it wouldn't matter where he had went. If he wasn't preaching the gospel and proclaiming God's word, there would have been a famine in that land. Right. Verse 15. And when he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, he sent, sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk of that swine did eat, and no man gave it unto him. So this man got to a point where he was so hungry, he was going to eat swine's food. And I'll tell you right now, I have four pigs. You have to be real hungry to want to get in that pen and eat what they eat. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger. So now he's realizing his error. And now he's realizing, man, I need to get back to my father. I need to get back to God. Verse 18. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. So this was the same mentality Daniel was having in his prayer. Was that he knew this nation was wicked. He knew that they wasn't doing right. And he didn't want him, God... To bless the nation for their righteousness, but so they could proclaim God's righteousness. Verse 20, And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. So God is the same way. When we're going down the wrong path and we start turning back to him, this is how he's going he's to accept us gladly, lovingly. Verse 21, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be God thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and his shoes, and on his feet. So we see the prodigal son, he goes lives a wicked, ungodly life by his actions. Right? And he comes back. The father rejoiced. The father's happy. The father's glad. The father throws a big party for him. He's back. He's repented. He says, verse 23, And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost, and he is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son. Now this is the second backslidden Christian. Now the first one, it was something that we could physically see because it was his actions. It was how he was living. right? But this prodigal son, he was backslidden, but it was in the heart. He was backslidden, and it was something we can't see. Uh, verse 25. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry. So he was angry that his brother repented and got back right with God. So you know what that tells me? He wasn't praying for his brother. Amen. When his brother left and was going down a wrong path, he wasn't praying for his brother. Right. Because if he was praying for his brother, when his brother got back, his heart would have been right. He'd have been rejoicing. Amen. It says, He was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with thy friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with the harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. He's saying, All this stuff I'm giving your brother, you've had this whole time. Right. What's wrong? You know, his heart was wrong. So we'll, we'll end with this Proverbs chapter. 24, give me a second. I'm not sure what verse yet. 
So just keep in mind, you know, being backslidden, like it, it doesn't have to be just a physical thing, an actional thing. It could also be in your heart. So even when we have people, our enemies, who people that hate us, that but we know that are Christians, that we don't agree with them, that their church is falling, we shouldn't be having that feeling of rejoicement right, right. when things like that are happening, right? We we should be that should be sorrowful towards. We should be mourning for them. We should be praying for them that God would have mercy on His name, on God's name, so that His name wouldn't be blasphemed. And verse seventeen. I'll end with this. Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth, and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth. So us as Law Liberty Baptist Church, let's just keep a pure heart and stay true to God. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for all that you do.